Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab, and what I've got in front of me here is an AWS Snowball. Now, AWS makes a series of snow devices ranging from snow cone to snowmobile to get little bits of data or large bits of data from on-prem scenarios to the cloud. But it's not just a data transport conversation. In fact, we've got a lengthy podcast where I talk with AWS about all the capabilities that these snow devices have. The one in front of me is an AWS Snowball Edge, and it's optimized for storage with 80 terabytes. But it's not just about storage. There's 40 vCPUs in here, and there's even a little bit of flash. But if you want more, if you want really a full cloud experience on-prem, they've got versions with more vCPUs. They've got a GPU-optimized version. And so while we're thinking about this as an 80 terabyte storage device to move data from our on-prem to the cloud, this is very much more and can be construed as really, this is AWS. Now, whether or not it looks like a cloud, this is effectively a cloud. It runs EC2 instances on it. It's got storage. And like I said, they've got versions with GPU. So if you want to talk about running inferencing engines at the edge, this is the kind of thing that can get that done in the most inhospitable places. As you can see, it's super rugged in its design. We've been kind of banging these things around in the lab. They're reused and wiped each time, but these hard shells protect everything inside. And Amazon's thought of really just about everything in the architecture and design of these units. And because this is effectively an Amazon cloud deployment, you can use this just like you would a cloud. If we wanted to burst into the cloud to set up a workload to test or, or do development work in the cloud, we could do that in a traditional environment. You could also do that on a snow device like this. So they're infinitely flexible. Our use case is much more plain. We just want to move our 100 trillion digits of pi from our lab to AWS. When the device shows up, one of the neatest things about it is the e-ink display. It's a UPS label on the top that's exceedingly well protected with some sort of uh, uh, Gorilla Glass or something really quite phenomenal to keep the e-ink display safe. There's a little port on top that you can open up and if you've ordered the optional power cable, that'll be in here along with an optional ethernet cable if you so choose. The e-ink display is really great too because we ordered two of these units and the job ID is on the e-ink display so you know which one you're working with. So we swing around the back, there's another little door here that fully recesses, has your power connection and all of your connectivity including several high speed options. In the front there's another door, another recessed secure lid, and this has got a fire tablet on the inside and that serves as the primary display for the unit so when we power this thing up, it'll give us the IP address and then it'll show lock or unlock status as we walk through the steps to uh, access the device. So once we've got this thing powered and cabled to our network, we fire up the, uh, the Fire tablet and it goes through its initialization screen. Now Amazon has a couple ways to interface. You can use CLI. We opted for the uh, Windows application. There's a Mac app and a Linux app as well called Ops Hub. Through the AWS Snow Portal, you'll get credentials that you put in the IP address into Ops Hub, you put in your credentials, load the file, and then you're in. And you're interacting with this thing as an AWS instance. You can see the storage available. You can see your services like EC2 and spin up all of those things individually. So we thought ahead and we ordered two snowballs and we've got one down here that you can't see out of frame. This one's actually having the files copied to it right now. One of the interesting things about moving files to this device into S3 is that the file size needs to be under five terabytes. So what we've actually done with our 100 terabyte file is compressed it and chopped it up into smaller increments. We have about 200, 200 gig files. We're gonna end up moving about 40 terabytes of data. Now, if we wanted to do that over the wire to get our files from here to S3, that would take somewhere between 40, 45 days, depending on our internet connection. Plus you've gotta rely on stability of the connection and a lot of other challenges. With this device, we're gonna be able to copy all those files over in roughly a day and a half, it looks like, and get this thing back up to Amazon in uh, the Columbus area pretty quickly, and they'll onboard the data into S3. That whole round trip should only be a couple days instead of the 40, 45, 50 days to do it over the wire. All right, so we've copied over our 200 files, about 40 terabytes to the one snowball, the extra snowball. We didn't really need for this project. We didn't appreciate how much our data was gonna compress although we did find something fun to do with that second snowball. But now that they're both done, it's time to get these guys over to UPS and get these over to Amazon's cloud in Columbus. We threw the pair of snowballs in the back of my car, drove them over to the UPS store, and off they went. Now their transition from Cincinnati to Columbus was a pretty short ride on the back of a UPS truck, 
And once they get to Amazon's site in uh, Columbus, the snowballs come off the truck, presumably we didn't follow them to see. They go through Amazon's process and in about two days they get to the point where the ingest starts to take place into S3. Now this is kind of fun yet excruciating as we watch the percentages update a little bit by little bit. But as it's going, your S3 bucket, if you look at that view, starts to pick up objects right away. So as the objects complete, they show up in S3. Now ours being these 200 gig files and we had 200 of them, they were grouped up in batches of five it looks like and it took about 80 minutes, 75 minutes for each group to process and then continue to, to kind of snake through the data, right? Uh, but it is interesting that as the data goes in, you do have immediate access to it in S3. After the ingest is complete, you can go into this console and see that the job has been completed. And within that, there are three other reports that are available. One's a summary, like a compliance report that shows we transferred this many objects, this many were a success and this many failed. But beneath that, there's a summary of all the tasks and the timing of which that took place, kind of like a tracking log. So that's really neat data to have. And then there's two audit reports. One is the success of all of your objects as they went in. And then one is a log of failures. And thankfully when we clicked ours, it's a blank text file as there were no failures. As we transition and take a look at our S3 buckets, you can see our 200 objects are there. As we scroll through and, and kind of take a look at the visualization of these, uh, these chunks of files in S3. As we reflect on our experience with Amazon Snow, we're really impressed with how it worked. The process was extremely easy to order. The only hiccup we had is because it was a brand new account, we got some emails of, uh, are you sure you should be ordering two snowballs? This doesn't seem like normal behavior. But beyond that, the process of getting the snowballs in, of copying our data over, of preparing them for shipment and watching the ingest process take place on the other side, we got it done in you know, like a week and a half and we weren't even really that speedy about it. We could have shaved a couple days here and there. But uh, if we were gonna transfer all of that data over the wire, it would have taken us months and we'd still be going. At the end of the day, if you wanna get a big chunk of data from the edge or your data center to an Amazon region, the Amazon Snow devices are really simple and a great way to do that. Now, what do we do next? I'm not exactly sure, but I've got my eyes on that little snow cone with GPU in it. And that's what I think we wanna play with next. We'll see if we can get one of those and check out more of the Amazon Snow family.